I'm presenting here a project I've recently completed in a first phase where I've created the hardware and software to manage some motorized fader and connect them to a DAW via Mac Universal Control Protocol. The final goal is of course to remotely control the sliders inside the DAW mixer. Here I have a um, uh, 200 mm fader from Borns uh, made of two 10 kilo ohm linear potentiometer, a 10 volt DC motor and a capacitive touch circuit. I have both these two faders along with others uh, from uh, DGK. This is the hardware. Uh, it's, it's pretty much easy to find very common and you can find it from Sparkfun or many other vendors like Farnell or, or uh, Mauser. The faders that you see here are now equipped with the hardware that I have designed and prototyped, prototyped uh, which is made with APCB, this one, that I have Thread man manufacturer by a market manufacturer. A 32 bit here microcontroller from uh, microchip, namely the AT Sandy 11. A single channel motor driver here, which is a, uh, a BD6121F. Four LEDs here for various. Uh, control and monitoring function. Two capacitors here and here to decouple the power supply from the MCU and the motor driver. A momentary button here to reset the circuit. A JST connector here to connect the motor to the circuit. And three pin other groups here for power supply and connectivity. So let's see what they do. There you go. Here I have my DAW, which is uh, Cubase. Let's start from the capacitive touch. The capacitive touch is developed uh, with the MCU functionality directly. It's very stable and precise and well working. And as you can see, when I touch here, I change the channel. Of course you can move the fader here and have the, fade, the virtual fader following in the Cubase mixer, same as channel 2, like this. And of course it works also in reverse with feedback, so moving the fader here in Cubase I have the movement following the reality, like this, channel 1 and 2. Let's make some recording of automation pattern, which is why, what these functionalities are made for. So let's enable writing on channel 1. Let's put in play, and then you can see moving the fader it register the automation pattern and then we could do the same here on, on channel 2 we put it just in read channel 1 channel 2 we put in read and write and we do the same so we launch here and we can register as you can see fader 1 is already reacting to the pattern to the automation pattern then getting back here and running. You see that the two faders are independently reacting to the automation pattern. That's it. Here it goes right back in place, like this, like this. Another way to see the thing is linking the two channels like this and there you go the two channels are now linked and of course moving one 
you have the other which is following moving one feather you have the second one which is following so the first one is writing data towards the DAW and the second one is moving catching the feedback coming from the DAW again independently and same if you do on the second one uh, just a few notes um, capacitive touch as I said has been developed using the, uh, the uh, microchip M MCU and the Qtouch library which is a library provided by, by microchip I have to say that is very reactive as you can see and also uh, very stable it's not really loaded I have tried many devices to do to do the job either other MCU or a specific device and I didn't get very exciting results where D1 here are pretty much satisfactory uh, second note is related to the ADC in this application ADC is very important and in particular having a, a, a performing and accurate ADC is very important because the ADC converts uh, the, the, the output of the line potentiometer into the digital domain and this conversion is then used to trigger the movement in order to control uh, the, the digital fader inside the DAW and even more important to control the motor here uh, to move accurately uh, the, the, the fader in position and I mean I again I have tried several uh, solution uh, MCU from ST from TI I got results but there was not really very accurate results this is definitely much uh, uh, better I mean this is the best result that I that I got last point is these two units are communicating with the uh, uh, with the board that is exchanged MIDI message with TAW via UART uh, so in this case there are two channel of the UART which are used by the two devices um, originally the idea was to develop this with I2C because I like it a lot the concept to have one unique bus and several slaves inside the bus uh, uh, connected attached to the to one single master problem with I2C is that until you have one or even two device it works quite well when you start having more you start having problem because the bandwidth is limited and speed is limited uh, and uh, and when you start injecting a lot of data into the bus uh, you start in having performance problem it's not that with the URT there are no problems following the the the, the platform the, the Mackey universal control platform you should have eight of these for eight channel plus one which is uh, the master so nine in total and then you need a tenth uh, UART uh, device to communicate via uh, MIDI uh, as far as I know, I have researched a bit on the market, as far as I know, it doesn't really exist an MCU with 10 uh, devices, uh, WART devices. And for this reason, I'm studying now this uh, uh, analog multiplexer in order to be able to connect more devices to one single UART. That's all uh, for this first video. Uh, I think I will do a second video in which I will describe the schematics of uh, the circuit here in case someone is interested in understanding the way I did it or wants to provide suggestion uh, in order to improve the, the design and probably I will also make a third video in order to show the software that I have developed to control the, the function of the, of the MCU that's all thank you very much bye